Audio feedback is something that adds a lot of immersion into your game and a lot of indie games end up kind of skimping out on this. In this video, we're gonna add audio to our guns. So we play gunshots whenever we shoot, play different clips whenever we have no ammo and even have a different sound whenever we shoot the last bullet. We'll quickly also add in playing audio effects with our impact system to make sure that the bullets play sound whenever they hit an object. Hey, Chris here from Lom Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you add a layer of immersion to your game with sound effects. Since this is part five of the gun series, you're probably not gonna be surprised by what we're gonna implement here. We're gonna implement a new audio config scriptable object where we will define different firing clips, a clip for when we're out of ammo, a clip when we play the last bullet, and of course a reloading clip. All that we'll just hook up into the gun scriptable object, make a couple of tweaks to how the gun shoots because we need to account for trying to shoot whenever we don't have ammo, update so we can play the reload sound, and hook it all back up into the inspector. I am going to be demonstrating this with an asset that I have from the asset store, Epic War Sound Effects. I've got a link in the description if you're interested in this one. It's pretty good. In some cases I wish there were a little bit more variety of things, but these are the sound effects I'm using in Lava Survival, and I'm pretty happy with them. In the repository we're going to have some less variety of sounds that I got from Open Game Art. That way you can have all this working just by checking out the repository. Remember that the full project is always on GitHub, link in the description. I don't think there's a lot to say here, this one's pretty straightforward. Let's jump in and start implementing this. Let's jump right into that audio config scriptable object that extends our scriptable object and add the create asset menu, file name, audio config, menu name, guns slash audio config, and I'll pick the order five. We've done this a bunch of times before, so that should be pretty familiar. On the audio config, I can think of a few things that we'd want to consider. One would be how loud we want the clips to play. So we'll put public float volume and set that to 1F by default. We can even attach a range from 0 to 1 because that's what the audio source expects. A public audio clip array called fire clips will choose from these which audio clip to play whenever we're shooting. And you could stop there, but something that maybe makes it a little bit more engaging would be if we have a public audio clip empty clip, which would be the clip to play whenever we are out of bullets and the player tries to shoot. A public audio clip reload clip, which will play whenever the player clicks reload. And finally, a public audio clip last bullet clip. This one may be less popular, but I've noticed in games like Battlefield 5, whenever you shoot the last bullet in your clip, it plays a distinctly different sound to inform you, hey, you're out of ammo before you start you know, keep spraying and getting the empty clip. We'll define some public methods to handle when we should play each of these clips, so that way it's all encapsulated within this class. With a public void play shooting clip that accepts the audio source we want to play from, and a bool is last bullet that we'll set to false by default. We'll check if it's the last bullet and the last bullet clip is not null. Then we'll play one shot that last bullet clip with this volume. In any other case, we're just going to play one shot again. We're going to pick a random clip from the fire clips with fire clips indexed by random range zero to fire clips dot length. And again, passing in the volume as the last argument. Then we'll define the public void play out of ammo clip, which accepts the audio source again. We'll check if the empty clip is not null. We'll play that again with play one shot empty clip and volume. And of course, the last one would just be play reload clip. Same thing here, just reload clip is not null. Play that clip. That's it from the audio config. Let's implement how do we use the audio config in the gun scriptable object. Up here at the top where we have all the other scriptable objects, we'll just add the public audio config scriptable object, audio config. And because we have to have an audio source to play from, we're gonna get that from the instantiated model. I'll define a private audio source, shooting audio source. And exactly as we did before, we're gonna get the audio source from the instantiated model. I'm gonna get it from the root level because I would expect that the audio source, we have it on the top level for whatever we're gonna shoot with. You could use get component and children if you didn't wanna structure your prefab that way. If we open up the shoot function, where we're actually doing the shooting, right here, wherever we're saying, hey, we're actually gonna do the shooting, we're gonna just play that firing audio clip. We'll pass the is last bullet with ammo config that current ammo equals one before we subtract the bullet from the current ammo clip. That will cover the vast majority of situations where we're trying to actually play a clip. But remember, we had a couple of other cases. One is what happens if you try to shoot and you don't have ammo, and the other one is reloading. Let's talk about reloading next. I think that's the simpler one. In the player action where we're handling the user input, we have this check on update, should manual reload or should auto reload. We then start trying to reload, and most of the reloading is handled by the animation events because 
So far, we've only cared whenever it's done, but now we want to play an audio clip as soon as the user starts to reload. So it'd be very convenient if from the gun scriptable object, I could say something like start reloading. Go back to the gun scriptable object, and in here we'll just proxy the call to audio config dot play reload clip passing the shooting audio source. So that should cover our reloading case perfectly. The last thing is, how do we play a sound whenever the user is out of ammo? Remember that tick will only call shoot if the player wants to shoot and we have some ammo. So if they want to shoot and they do not have any ammo, our initial instinct might be, we can simply play the out of ammo audio clip. But we need to consider that there's a delay before we can actually try to shoot. So I'm gonna actually rename this function shoot to try to shoot. And then in here, only if we're actually going to try to shoot, which is the second if, what we're gonna do is say last shoot time equals time dot time. So we still keep that delay between each attempted shot. Then we're gonna check ammo config current clip ammo is zero, meaning we're completely out of ammo. We're gonna play that out of ammo clip and then return so we don't do the rest of whatever this is gonna to try to do. That way we're still getting the delay as expected, but we will not play the shooting system. We won't play the shooting clip. We won't subtract ammo, all that stuff. Back in tick, we need to make sure we just call try to shoot every frame because we've now guarded against doing the majority of the shooting in try to shoot if the time has elapsed where it can shoot. Let's go back to the Unity editor, hook all this up, create these audio config scriptal objects now. As usual in the guns folder, I will create a new folder called audio. And in here, I will create two audio config scriptable objects, one for the clock and one for the M4. Now I'm going to put in some maybe better sounding audio clips that I personally am currently using in Llama Survival. I can't include those in the repository, but I have included some examples. So whenever you pull this from the repository, there will be some clips, but they won't be the exact same ones you're about to hear. And for the reload, I'll use this gun reload audio, which came from open game art. So that one's included in the repository. Just for fun so we can hear it, I'm going to put the last bullet clip as a Glock bullet. I didn't have a good audio clip for that, so we'll just hear something different. On the Glock, we'll do a very similar process. I've got three variations for the fire clip, so we're going to use those. For the empty, we'll pick revolver dry fire, put reload for that, and again for the last bullet clip, I don't know, we'll pick a different sound. One thing I will say is the volume of one is probably too loud, so I'm going to cut that in half. Make sure to link those back up on the main gun scriptable object. And finally, let's make sure that there is an audio source on both the pistol and the M4. I'll just disable play on awake, leave most everything else alone except remove Doppler because that sounds a little bit funny sometimes. I'm gonna turn off auto reload so that way we can hear that empty clip instead of just as soon as we empty the clip, immediately reload. One other thing, I'm gonna quickly set up the impact system to play an audio clip on hit. The full video for the impact system is gonna be linked in the description card on the screen. I'm not gonna go super deep in depth on this because I already covered it in a separate video, but I think since we're talking about audio, it's important to also talk about how are we gonna play audio effects. So I'll just create an empty game object called impact audio source and attach the exact same audio source we just made to it. We're gonna make that into a prefab. Then in our impact effects folder, I'm gonna create a new impact effect called play audio effect. And I'm gonna do this where we just have one impact sound. You could customize this per impact type, meaning for each gun, you could have a different impact sound or each material that's hit could have a different impact sound. For today, we're just gonna make them all play the same thing. For the audio source prefab, we're gonna drag that audio source we just created. And for audio clips, these are coming from that Epic War sound effects collection. And I'm just gonna select a bunch of bullet impact dirt ones as the possible options. For the volume range, I think these should probably be less loud than the actual gun shooting. So I'm gonna do like 25% volume. And we'll just leave that alone and see how it sounds. Then on each impact effect, we're just gonna add a play audio effect and use that one we just created. So for each surface type, we're gonna make sure that it plays a particle system and plays an impact sound. hearing the shooting clip, we're hearing the impact. If I click reload, it'll play the clip. 
It's not super nice to our animation, so we might want to speed up the animation or have a longer reload clip, but mostly that seems like it's working okay. There's one last problem to consider here. Remember that this M4 and maybe some other high rate of fire guns that you have are shooting a bunch of bullets, and if we're also going to play an audio sound effect, listen to this. If I just sprayed the entire clip, a lot of the sound effects just didn't play. Let me do it again one more time. Listen closely. Pretty weird, right? Everything seems to be working. We're playing all the audio clips. It's just, we're not hearing them. If we open up the project settings, audio, there is a kind of hidden configuration that you may have not heard of before. Something called the Max Real Voices. This limits how many simultaneous sounds can be played and be picked up by an audio listener. Max Virtual Voices allows you to have more than the real voices playing and once a real voice becomes available because it's completed, it will pick up on the virtual voice, the next one in the queue. So because we have a very high rate of fire and we're playing a bunch of impact sounds all at the same time, we're exceeding this limit of 32 max real voices. If I update this to 64, I'll link you to the documentation on this. I haven't seen in the documentation where they describe how many voices are max total per platform. So you will definitely want to test this on your target platform to see is the max real voices a reasonable number for your target platform. On my computer, 64 plays fine, so I'm going to use that. It's also important to note that the more real voices you have actively playing, the higher CPU usage will be dedicated to audio. And now listen to the difference. You heard every single bullet and impact effect. So if you're running into this case where you're very sure you're playing the audio and it's just, it's not playing, Check out if your max real voices needs to be increased if that solves your problem. I hope that's pretty straightforward. There wasn't a lot new here. It's just reusing the same concepts we've been using this whole time with the scriptable objects with configuration and hooking it up together in the gun scriptable object. Again, the full projects on GitHub, link in the description. All of my projects are always on GitHub. You can always check out the code after you follow it along in the video. Remember, this is part five of the gun series. So if you were a little bit lost, you can go back to part one watch the whole thing and see how we've implemented all of this from scratch. If you wanna stay up to date when the next videos come out, make sure you've liked and subscribed. Remember there's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday. And if you wanna support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, get your name up here on the screen, get a boy shout out starting at the awesome tier. Speaking of those awesome supporters, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Rulin, and Paul Barry. And at the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen and Andrew Albright. Thank you all for your support. I am incredibly grateful.